Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation and chronic daily migraine survivor. I am excited to tell you that I am here today with Dr. Amelia Barrett, MD. Hello, Dr. Barrett, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you today? I am great. Thank you so much for being here. Dr. Dr. Barrett is a board certified neurologist and the creator of the Migraine Relief Code. The Migraine Relief Code is an online course that teaches people to reduce their migraines naturally using science. So Dr. Barrett is here to talk to us today about a really awesome topic. Our topic is the glymphatic system. That is glymphatic starting with a G, not an L. It is the new buzzword out there related to migraine. In fact, we are doing this topic because some of our awesome viewers asked us to do an episode on how the glymphatic system can be related to our migraine disorder, as there is some data out there now that we can discuss. Um, To some people, though, I'm sure that the term glymphatic system sounds like a new bizarre alien phrase. So let's see what we can learn about the glymphatic system and migraine and other headache disorders today. We're going to pick Dr. Barrett's brain. So many of us have heard of the lymphatic system, starting with an L, which extends throughout our bodies and returns proteins and fluids from the periphery of our body back into circulation or back to our blood. Um, So it does this to maintain homeostasis or to maintain an equilibrium in our bodies. So what is interesting about this is our central nervous system, our brains, is probably the most metabolically active component of our body, yet it does not uh, have any lymphatic component to it, which is where our new buzzword comes in it instead has the glymphatic system. So let's find out what that is. So Dr. Barrett, can you please define what the glymphatic system is for us? Yeah, absolutely. And I like how you're drawing the parallels with the lymphatic system in the body. Mm -hmm. So let me just take a minute to explain why it was so hard to figure this out because in your body, in your arm, you can find lymphatic vessels, right? right? They're there, they're visible. However, we don't see them in the brain. So for a long time, we had no idea how the brain got rid of its wastes. Mm -hmm. And that is fundamentally what the glymphatic system does. It is your brain's trash truck, (laughs) literally in simplest terms. So because we couldn't see discrete vessels where this was happening, we thought that the brain just didn't have one. And literally just within the past several years, we've discovered, aha, actually there is a glymphatic system in the brain. And so we're just now uncovering um, how it works. So let me give you a quick picture, um, if I can, uh, just because I think it's easier to visualize it. All right. So here is uh, a representation of the glymphatic nervous system. It's kind of a busy picture, but the basic idea is that the fluid comes into your brain in the upper left part of the screen Mm -hmm. um, outside of that red vessel. Mm -hmm. See this red... um, tube coming in in the upper part of the screen and then it sort of comes towards you that's an artery that the artery is how the blood comes into the brain now what's clever is that the way that the glymphatic fluid gets into the brain is it tracks along the outside of that vessel okay so it's almost like a tube within a tube although that outer tube isn't entirely visible. It's not like a whole discrete uh, structure. So it's just sort of tracking along the outside of that blood vessel. And then what happens when you get down to these uh, purple blobs in the lower part of the screen, those are the Mm -hmm. neurons. So the fluid basically kind of oozes across the tissue of the brain. It's washing everything out as it goes. All of these dark blobs there, the waste, That's what the fluid is clearing out. So it's literally almost like when you have a dirty sponge and you put it underneath the sink and the clean water comes in and then you squeeze it and all the dirty water goes out. Very similar. 
except okay. what happens is the fluid sneaks in along the artery, oozes across the brain tissue, takes all of the uh, waste products with it, and then it leaves the same way it came in. It tracks along the outside of the veins. The veins are, of course, what drains the blood out of the brain. And then it just gets processed back into your body to be eliminated by the kidneys the way all of our other wastes do. So it's a beautiful little system. Um, and it took some very sophisticated science to figure out how this was all happening. So that's kind of an overview of the glymphatics. Does that make sense? It makes sense. And the visual is actually very, very helpful. So I hope everyone can see that. Our next question, so what I was curious about is does the glymphatic system only clear waste from our brain or does it also deliver important things to our brain? It does bring some things into the brain. For okay. example, it'll bring in glucose, it'll bring in lipids. As you know, over half of our brain is made of lipids. So that's actually a pretty important function. A lot of the stuff can come in through the blood vessels as well. Right. So the glymphatic system is only part of it, but it does serve that function as well. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So basically for both clearance and delivery purposes, a healthy functioning glymphatic system is hugely important to a healthy brain. Am I correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So my next question is that it's my understanding that the glymphatic system for the most part functions when we're asleep. Is that true? Yes, it is. Okay. And so what does this mean for those of us who have migraine, chronic migraine or another headache disorder, and perhaps really do not sleep well? Well, unfortunately, it means that your brain is not going to get that detox uh, action going on at night. So if you're having sleep problems, um, your brain can't go into the deeper stages of sleep. Maybe you've all heard of sleep cycles. We have stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, REM sleep. Mm -hmm. If you're not sleeping well and your brain can't go into these deeper stages of sleep right here, then the glymphatic system is not going to do its job. It works in those deeper stages of sleep. So if you're not getting that deeper stages of sleep, your brain is not detoxing. And for migraine in particular, what that means is that you're not going to get rid of all the infl inflammation that's released when you have a migraine, right? We've learned a right. lot recently about the role of inflammation in generating migraine. Well, mm -hmm. after your brain releases this massive amount of inflammatory chemicals, your brain has to get rid of it, right? right. So this is the way that uh, it does that and through the glymphatic system in particular. So if you have chronic sleep pro problems, your brain is probably not detoxing well. Okay. I find that so interesting. I think that's a huge component of uh, what we want to talk about today when it comes to the glymphatic system. And it, to me, it's so interesting because I think a lot of people watching our show or listening to this episode today probably have trouble sleeping. Um, so I think that the data that started a lot of the buzz around the glymphatic system and migraine had to do with cortical spreading depression. Cortical spreading depression is likely, uh, according to what many people think, at least at this time, uh, very important in the progression and the start of migraine. So can you just remind us what cortical spreading depression is really quick? Sure. Yeah, it's basically a wave of abnormal electrical activity that spreads across your brain. Mm -hmm. So when you're having an aura, that's what's going on in your brain. While you're seeing those flashing lights or you can't talk or you're numb or tingly, that's what's happening in the brain. It's truly an abnormal electrical event. Right. Um, so that's what's happening during cortical spreading depression. Now, the fascinating thing here is that we know from very um, detailed scientific studies that migraine, the cortical spreading depression in particular, shuts off the function of the lymphatics. Okay. So that's another one of the links between migraine and the lymphatic system. So as you can imagine, if you are getting a lot of migraine auras, um, it is going to shut off the lymphatics that is going to, again, make it harder to process all those inflammatory chemicals and just lead you down that pathway to chronic migraine. 
Okay, I think that's important. Um, and I also wanted to, to ask, is there anything that we know of other than sleep? I don't think we do, but I hear I am picking your brain. Other than sleep, is there anything we know of that can make a healthier glymphatic system? Um, you know, I don't think so. I mean, I would imagine that hydration is important. It's a fluid. All fluids in our body become depleted when we're dehydrated. So of course, hydration is essential. I think most of us with migraines know that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably one way that it's related. Okay. That makes sense? Yes. Yeah. So our audience uh, is comprised of people with many different headache disorders, migraine, uh, high and low pressure headache, cluster, et cetera. Has there been any data published to indicate that the glymphatic system could be related to any other types of headache besides migraine? Yeah, actually, interesting that you should ask that question. Um, so idiopathic intracranial hypertension or mm -hmm. IIH right. is a condition where there may be a link with the glymphatic system as well, which kind of makes sense if you think about it, because the glymphatics is basically a fluid system in the brain. Mm -hmm. And IIH is a condition where there's too much fluid in the brain. Right. So normally what happens, one of, one of the things we know for sure about IIH is that if somebody has... Uh, an impaired ability to drain blood out of their brain, for example, uh, a stenosis or narrowing of the vein or a clot in the vein or uh, things like that, mm -hmm. um, that that will lead to increased pressure in the brain. And so it's a similar problem with the glymphatic system. If there's any kind of a problem draining that fluid out, mm -hmm. um, then that can definitely lead to increased pressure in the brain. Now, Unfortunately, we do not have any way to diagnose this at all at this point. We right. cannot tell if somebody's lymphatic system is working well or not. Mm -hmm. it's really still in the research phases. We're starting to understand it. So unfortunately, it hasn't quite reached out into the clinical world yet. But yeah, definitely. There's definitely some implications for other types of headache disorders other than migraine. Right. And I think it's really important that you mention that because as I said, when we started this episode, it is glymphatic system is sort of a new buzzword. We don't have, we are talking about pretty much most of the data we have related to headache, migraine, and the glymphatic system we are talking to you about today. There's not a lot out there yet. So you're getting, you're getting it all today. Um, and right. we, we can't draw a ton of conclusions yet, but, um, so um, I realize the data has not yet reached this level of sophistication, but do you think it's possible that any of the multiple genes that we have found to be related to migraine in really broad genetic studies, do you think any of those could possibly be related to the glymphatic system? I mean, sure. You know, it makes sense that there would be a connection there and that people right. who have abnormalities and, and you know the certain types of migraine genes might affect the glymphatic system um, you know the the receptors that are involved in helping the fluid track and that kind of thing we don't know that yet right um, you know it has not been conclusively proven but I mean it's reasonable to think there might be a link yeah right Okay, so since this is a quite a medically intensive uh, episode, I'm wondering if you can just summarize for us what we think the relationship between migraine and the glymphatic system could be. Yeah, sure. I think there, there are really two key points. So um, first of all, that people who get migraine with aura are shutting off their glymphatic system, which is the system that removes toxins from your brain and therefore toxins accumulate in the brain. Second of all, sleep disorders travel with migraine. Mm -hmm. So people who aren't sleeping well are also not detoxing their brain well. That can lead to an accumulation of inflammatory toxins and uh, push people down the road towards chronic headaches. Right. Um, and then how about the role, the possible role of the glymphatic system in, in idiopathic intracranial hypertension? Yeah, and for there, it could be something along the lines of um, sort of a congestion in the brain of too much fluid, too much waste products that are leading to the symptoms of headaches in those people. Okay, 
Do you think there's a possibility that uh, in the future, a few years from now, we could be on here saying that there's a role for the glymphatic system and other forms of headache like cluster or who knows, NDPH, any of, the, any, any of the other forms of headache that our viewers uh, are likely diagnosed with? Sure, yeah. You know, these studies are ongoing right now. Um, you know, we're really trying hard to understand how problems with the glymphatic system lead to um, problems with the brain, essentially. So right. yeah, we could be. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add to our discussion of the glymphatic system today? Um, I think we kind of covered it really. <laughs> we did. There's not much out there. We covered, yeah. <laughs> we covered everything we know <laughs> That's right. as far, as far as we can tell. Well, thank you, Dr. Barrett so much for being with us today. And thank you everyone for joining us for this episode of heads up and please join us again for our next episode of the webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.